Your Creative Push, episode 298. Mm, I really should do that drawing. I wonder when I have time today. Carve out a little bit of time to be creative. Welcome to Your Creative Push, the podcast that pushes you to pursue your creative passions. I'm your host, Youngman Brown, and my guest today is Kosha Kuna. Kosha is an artist, teacher, and co-founder of Sketchbook School. She studied graphic design and worked as an award-winning photographer, but it was her passion for drawing and painting that became her lifelong mission, and her enthusiasm as an illustrator inspired her to share her learnings online and became the basis for Sketchbook School today. And she comes on the show today to talk about Sketchbook School. You might remember the other co-founder of Sketchbook School, Danny Gregory, who came on the show back in episode 293. Highly recommend you go and listen to that. But we talk about different aspects of Sketchbook School today, as well as Kosha's creative career. We talk about her entry and exit from the world of photography and how she became interested in drawing and how a dull job can actually make you more creative. Kosha talks about the experience of creating her own first courses and then meeting Danny Gregory and the importance of community for creative individuals and how Sketchbook School's community differs from others. She also talks about Draw Tip Tuesday and how that started and how she's been able to stay consistent doing that every week for six years and how creating Sketchbook School and creating instructional videos has changed the way that she makes and thinks about art. Then Kosha talks about some of her own creative resistances and how she gets past them and how to trick your inner critic. And finally, how to be able to determine whether you need to move on to a different creative realm or whether you're simply in a funk. I really feel like the last few episodes of the podcast have just set the bar higher and higher um, for your creative push. And Kosha absolutely lived up to those standards. So please sit back, relax, and give it up for Kosha Kuna. Kosha, welcome to Your Creative Push. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Hey, I'm excited to have you as well. Mm -hmm. Um, And I can't wait to talk about Sketchbook School. We had Danny on uh, a few weeks ago, um, Mm -hmm. and it really pumped me up to think about um, what you guys are doing. So I'm excited to talk about that. But I was hoping uh, before we got to that, maybe you could tell us a little bit about yourself and kind of your creative upbringing, how you got to the point you are today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. I'll just start at the upbringing, I guess. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) That makes sense to just do it in that um, uh, order. So, um, well, as a kid, I used to love, love, love drawing. And I never really stopped doing it. And I was also very much encouraged by my family, which I am very fortunate. I now realize (laughs) because I hear a lot of people um, people's stories about how they were not encouraged to make art, any kind of art. Um, I was surrounded by a lot of creative people. My dad used to be a photographer before he uh, retired. And uh, w- my grandfather, one of them was uh, a painter and also a teacher in art school. And the other one was an architect. So from all sides, there was a lot of creativity. And um, yeah, I just loved drawing so it made sense for me to uh, after high school to find a way to do more art and I was quite young so I didn't go to art school yet because they just rejected me because I was a little bit too young for it and they told me to go to um, a graphic design school to get some more skills in and uh, a little bit more of experience uh, any anyway and I actually loved that so I went there for a year but I just finished the whole thing um so was um I'm schooled in graphic design but it's so long ago that that's very old (laughs) so (laughs) I can't really use it but I uh I learned a lot of drawing techniques there uh, because we we were drawing a lot apart from all the all the graphic stuff and and uh, lettering and all that kind of thing so that was really great to uh, to really learn so many different skills and so many different techniques. But what I also learned, and that's a little bit weird because I am the daughter of a photographer, but I was never interested in photography until we got some lessons in photography there in that school. And I got so interested in it 
that I decided to go to art school after all, but to uh, learn photography, to become a photographer. Hmm. Um, so I did, and I also dropped out <laughs> <laughs> just because I had the attitude of, I want to make fun stuff and I want to make my uh, money with taking photos and um, uh, I, I'm just going to be a photographer. And in that art school, they were like, no, you don't make fun stuff. You need to make very important things and meaningful uh, images. And that just really didn't work with my sense of, well, my character, I think. So, um, in a so were, they were they based more on like selling your photography than... No. No, that was com that was way too commercial. I, me saying that I wanted to make my uh, make my make a living out of photography that was like kind of you you just don't do you ju you don't say that you're going right. to be an okay. artist, <laughs> and the best way to do it is to be a starving artist, something like that. That's that's mm. how I you know probably there was a lot more uh, uh, around that, but that's how I just remember and j how it felt. So um, I just started to find small uh, jobs for myself, small gigs to uh, do photography, and that worked. And from there on, I just started building a freelance business as a photographer. And I worked for magazines and for designers and uh, advertising agencies, and I was doing pretty well. Uh, I've done it for almost 10 years. And then at some point, I realized that I sort of lost my mojo, my creative mojo. So I saw my pictures in a magazine. I was like, yeah, it's in there. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't mm. feel that excitement, that is an initial excitement of I'm actually making things and people are actually using this in their magazines. And a lot of people are looking at this and admiring it maybe, you know, so... And it's not about the admiring. It was really about the joy. And I realized that I was making things because people were telling me to make them instead of making things that I really wanted to make. So that was kind of hard because I decided that I was a photographer. And if I didn't do this job, if I wasn't a freelance photographer anymore... Who, who was I? You know, I really, I realized I identified myself with the work that I did. So that was quite a revelation. And, um, and I did, uh, yeah, I, I, I did decide to just move away from photography because it didn't make me happy anymore. But I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do then. But I still had been drawing a lot, but not a lot, not daily, but I always was drawing out ideas before I uh, went on a shoot and um, I would draw on vacations. And I picked up pencils and brushes more in the time that I didn't find that joy in photography. So that habit of creativity in a different way without a camera, that started growing already. So I started to explore that a little bit more, started to pick up all those, all those skills, all those different techniques that I learned back in graphic design school. And, um, yeah, started to just explore, see if I wanted to do more of that as a hobby. And in the meantime, I have had all sorts of jobs <laughs> <laughs> from uh, being a chef in a restaurant because I love cooking. And I thought, well, I like cooking, so why not make my job out of that? which of course killed the joy. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I made the same mistake again. I still love cooking. I I uh, uh, I went out of that job. Uh, I left that job early enough to not hate it. Um, and I have been a barista because I like coffee. And I have worked for a few years in a credit card company, which was super dull, but made me mm -hmm. so productive creatively. And How so? Well, because the job was so dull, I, uh, it wasn't a full-time job. So the, the, I worked there for three days in a week. And the other two days, I just felt so much. I had to create things. I had to do something that made me, I don't know the word for it, but I just needed to do something that with my hands and to create something that has results and doesn't need to be looked at by anyone just for myself. 
And um, that actually really made me draw so much and gave me so many ideas. And that's when I started a blog as well, because people were like, why don't you just post that? It looks really great. Maybe you should just have sort of um, a stage for that. I was like, yeah, who wants to see that? It's just mm -hmm. scribbles, you know? But through, um, I, I did it. And through blogging, I found a lot of people that I find very inspiring and that I still follow. And um, I also found uh, online courses to, you know, for certain skills or to learn how to deal with certain creative blocks or fears or whatever. So I took some of those. And at one of those Create creativity courses. I was like, yes, somehow this is a little bit dull, and maybe I can do better. And then I thought, maybe I can do better. And then I started to create my very first online course, which I just put on a blog. I really bootstrapped it. I put it on a blog. People could post their uh, art in a Facebook group, and um, and it actually worked. And people ask, when's the next one? So, and this is uh, in this at the same time that I was working at that very dull job, I was also having that online community experience that I didn't even know. Uh, and the online experience of actually teaching people something that I know. And it was a revelation. I loved it. I have done that for a few years. I started with uh, a course with my basic drawing skills that I know. It, it was called Just Draw It. I have retired it for a few years now. And then I also uh, created other courses that people really were asking for, the people who took my courses. And at some point, here we are, I met uh, Danny Gregory. He was in Amsterdam for uh, a speaking gig. And people in my online course sent me emails saying, you need to head on over to Danny Gregory's blog because he uh, says on his blog that he wants to meet uh, people in Amsterdam who are sketchers or who are artists. And uh, you guys got to meet. I was like, uh, who is he again? <laughs> so mm -hmm. I had, and he was, I mean, he's a big deal, you know, and I didn't really realize that he is such a big deal and that he has so many followers. I did have a book of him, but yeah, I just wasn't really paying attention, I guess. So I met up with him in Amsterdam and he just retired from 30 years in um, advertising and he was looking for something different. He wanted to make more art. He wanted to do videos. He was very interested to know how I did my online courses and then and there, the, the very first idea for Sketchbook School was actually started because both of us were like, okay, so there are so many people that we follow online through their blogs or, or you know, uh, social media that we admire. We admire the style and we want to know how they do it. And we're also curious how they, you know, what, does their studio look like? Do they work at home? Do they have a studio somewhere? Uh, where do they live? How do they incorporate their art in their other stuff in their lives? I had never found anything like that online, a, a course where you could actually get an insight into people's lives and into people's art and it being a course that is not just taught by one person with one approach and one kind of skill, but a course that would perhaps take six weeks and every week there would be a different artist showing their approach and uh, inviting you in their studios. So we were like, it doesn't exist. We want it. Should we just make it? <laughs> and yes. that's how <laughs> School started. So really, uh, that was the second time that I had been thinking, okay, so I need something that doesn't exist. I will just make it. And uh, yeah, hooking up with him to actually create this, that was yeah one of the best things that happened in, in my career and maybe in my life. So yeah, and that's where we are now. That's over four years ago. And um, we are 21 courses uh, further up the road now. And we have a huge, huge com community, about 50,000 people who are all 
interacting with each other, motivating each other. They are meeting in real life. People are flying around the world, doing tours around their sketchbook school, friends, surf couching. It's amazing. So, yeah, that's kind of my path. That was a long story, wasn't it? (laughs) Yeah, but a good one. Um, and there's, there's a bunch of questions I had. And I guess we'll start um, from the present and then move backwards. Okay. Um, and first of all, that the, the reason that you created Sketchbook School and other things is the reason that I made this podcast. And I think it's um, a good testament to when, when you get an idea – to anybody, when, when you get an idea or when you um, when, when you want something to inspire you and you can't find it, that's usually, I think, a good motivation or a good reason to do it yourself. Even if yeah. you don't have the skills, even if you don't know, even if you know it's going to be kind of a long journey and you're going to have to learn a lot and it's going to be a lot of hard work, I think it's your calling right there that you should create that thing or at least try to, uh, to bring it out into the world. Because if you want it, Definitely, there's other people that want it, even if they don't know it yet. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, I think the best products and and services have uh, actually sprouted out of a, sort of a frustration of, of a need that wasn't answered to. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, and Danny and I were talking about um, Sketchbook School as well and uh, kind of the importance of community. So I was wondering if you could speak about that too. Um, How important is that um, community uh, around Sketchbook School? It's way more important than we uh, expected it to be uh, in the beginning because we we just started that first course. We just asked a bunch of friends to make some videos and uh, we made some videos ourselves and then we bootstrapped that whole first course. And what happened then when people started enrolling and actually starting taking the course, how they interacted with each other and how they became cheerleaders without us really, in, I mean, we invited them to, but we didn't really think that would be such a, uh, an important uh, part element in the school. Uh, people just made friends and they uh, um, asked each other questions about uh, their the drawings that they would upload in the in the classrooms in the online classrooms they would answer to each other's stories they would share very personal stories too so they would really open up to each other and I think it is a very important even for the people who don't have that you know need to open up uh the whole community aspect is really important because we want to support the artists that we feature in our courses uh, but we don't want them to be in the classroom all the time uh responding to questions and responding to um uh homework that people upload because it's not about grades, you know, it's just the art that you make is the art that you make and it deserves whatever grade you want to give it, you know, you can't grade art. Um, We just want to encourage you to make art and to keep making art. And of course, it's great if there is an appearance of one of the artists every now and then, um, but it's, they don't need to be there because the community itself already runs the whole motivational part of being in a classroom. And I think that really makes a difference between us and other online course platforms. There's a certain intimate feeling to uh, the classes that you take. You don't need to be in there. You can just take the, the classes, do your homework, keep it to yourself. That's all fine. You will still need a, uh, you will still learn a ton. But uh, if you interact with the classmates, then there's a whole different layer of an experience that really keeps people in there and keeps people wanting to um, uh, do more. People are sometimes really waiting for the next course. Like, I want to get in. And they are actually sending each other's each other messages like, mm-hmm. are you taking this course? Let's take it together, you know. That's amazing. And that's all online. So someone in Australia would hook up with someone in Spain and together they go through this course and they share their experiences along with hundreds of others too. It's it's pretty amazing. 
Absolutely. Yeah. It keeps you motivated and it keeps you going uh, in ways (laughs) that you can't really do by yourself, like a gym buddy. (laughs) Yes, it's true. It is. We often use that that terminology of going to the gym and wanting, you know, wanting to be thin, but you don't want to work out. Well, it's not happening, you know, but if you work out and you get some help, then you might feel fit and you want to stay fit and you want to keep going. Well, and you also do this thing called Draw Tip Tuesdays. Now, did that start before or after you started Sketchbook School? That started before. That was actually something that a friend of mine, I think I didn't even come up with it myself. I don't even remember. But um, I think it was partly because I was talking uh, uh, with a friend of mine about branding and all that kind of stuff. And Mm -hmm. it was his idea to call it Draw Tip Tuesday. And I, I actually love that name still. Yes. And it was really sort of, initially, it was a branding idea. Like if I put something out every week, it's a consistent thing and I can give simple tips. That would be fun to do, you know, and mm-hmm. it would be great if people can follow and, um, yeah, get to know me a little bit uh, through that. So I think I've been doing it for um, six years or more. <laughs> I should, yeah, I should actually take a look and see. But it's it's been a long time. And it's pretty amazing how consistent I am. We, I was just going to say, yeah, with that, like, you have, have you missed a week? Uh, last year, I missed one week and people started complaining. Oh, tisk tisk. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have, I have like uh, skipped a few weeks, but mm-hmm. I think uh, you can count them on just one hand those weeks in all wow. those years. I just, you know, I try to, um, be smart about it and I just record a whole bunch in one go so I don't need to think about it for a few weeks again. Uh, but sometimes I'm like, didn't I already do any everything in Draw to Tuesday? <laughs> right. Six but, years. <laughs> <laughs> six years. But I mean, I keep learning too. So there's always something. And I'm like, oh, maybe if I simplify this a little bit, I could explain it in like two or four minutes video. And I still enjoy it. I get so many great responses to it. Um, also, if I meet people in real life, they are like, oh, I really wait every every Tuesday. I wait for the draw to, uh, to mm. say to come <laughs> out and I do it with my kids. And so, yeah, that really helps, you know, to, to stay motivated, to keep doing it. And um, now that it's part of uh, sketchbook school as well, it's, uh, I think it's an important part to uh, show that making art is something fun and very accessible. It's not, it's not hard. It shouldn't be a struggle. You should just have fun during the whole process. And that's what I try to show in the Draw to Tuesday videos. Yeah. Right. Yeah, this, this podcast has been going for over two and a half years and almost 300 episodes. And I'm like, wow, wow, aren't I talking about the same things or like, <laughs> surely, like, we're gonna run out of stuff to talk about. But sometimes it is important to talk about the same things yeah. over and over again, and, and look at it from different angles, too. Yeah. And like you said, you know, as you continue to grow, uh, you, you continue to think about different ideas. Now, I wonder with Draw Tip Tuesdays and with making courses for Sketchbook School and, and elsewhere, um, what has that done for your art and like the way that you think about your art? Well, especially Sketchbook School has made me grow as an artist like 10 times quicker, I think, than I mm-hmm. maybe would have grown if if it wasn't for Sketchbook School. I mean... Uh, Danny does all the all the video productions for uh, the US and I do all the European video productions so we actually get to hang out with the artists that we admire <laughs> for a day or even more and just you know I I just press my nose up on their art and I just you know I can go through all their sketchbooks and uh, ask all the questions that I want to ask and it's so inspiring so then I just try and incorporate a little bit to see if if all that wonderful style can rub off a little bit on on mine Mm -hmm. (laughs) and um, it's just really great as we make these courses these lessons for all the all of our audience it's also for us it's actually in the first place it is for us because we are making what we want to to make because we want to learn 
So every time uh, a course comes out, I, I learn so many things. Uh, and that really has um, made my art evolve very quickly. I just not that long ago, I would draw very realistically. I would be very detailed, do very detailed and elaborate color pencil drawings. And when I look at them, I still think, oh, wow, it's, you know, it's, it's pretty good. And uh, I can feel that Zen feeling that it gave because it's so, well, it's, it's elaborate. It's a lot of layering of uh, color pencils and it, it's kind of like a meditation. But now I, I am more of the bigger gestures. I grab bold pens and uh, bright colors with watercolor and I like splashing around paint on the page and just really experimenting. So I think my lines are more expressive and more daring. And there's, I think I just loosened up maybe as a person too. So my art also loosens, uh, loosened up. Um, and it's really interesting to see that evolving so quickly. And I'm, I can't wait to see how my art will look in another five years, you know? Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's one of the, the coolest parts about sketchbook school, because um, one of my favorite quotes is that you're the average of the, the five people that you spend the most time with. Yeah. And when you don't have like kind of artist friends or creative people in real life that you hang out with, um, a lot of times you'll, you know, You'll be inspired by Instagram or your, your favorite artist websites or just checking out their feeds. Yeah. Um, and that's a different experience than actually like spending time with them or being friends with them and uh, seeing their studios. So I think yeah. like you're able to do by making the videos and then by people actually watching the videos, it's like you're learning by osmosis and like mm -hmm. you can not only gain the inspiration of seeing somebody that's actually doing it and seeing it behind the scenes and seeing um, their studios and stuff like that, but you can also pick up on things that you wouldn't normally pick up on. And like you said, you know, challenging yourself and learning new ways to develop as a creative person. Yeah. And um, uh, to add to that, it's uh, the videos aren't just, the people showing their artwork and how they do it, but it's also really talking about why they do it. And hmm. that resonates with a lot of people, of course. And also, of course, we talk about creative blocks and we talk about any struggles. And um, yeah, many people in the audience are like, oh, I'm so happy I'm not the only one, you know? <laughs> right. And even this, you know, uh, illustrator who is a professional illustrator or this artist who is super successful they have the same struggles. Just knowing that it's normal, that also is really a very important part to communicate if you're making art and if you're talking about art and if you're teaching art. And uh, something else that I thought of while you were talking about if you don't have any people around you who are interested in art or doing any art, how then you don't have any motivation. There is actually an artist in our faculty, Andrea Joseph, and she has been an artist in the closet for mm -hmm. years. So she, I think she did used to blog about her art, but under a different name perhaps or whatever. But her friends and her colleagues and her family did know, did not know that she was making art. And she, her art is amazing. She, she makes fantastic art. Uh, and then at some point she decided, okay, I think I need to come out of, uh, uh, come out of the closet, closet as, uh, as an artist. And, um, at that point she actually became, uh, she started to grow as an artist too. And if you look at the art that she was making back then and the art that she makes now, it's, I think she went through maybe a bit of a similar progression or whatever you want to call it, because now she is, her drawings are wild it's like she makes big hand gestures and there's ink and there's watercolors and there's bold lines and there's all kinds of stuff you know used and mixed together and um before that she would uh, do very elaborate very precise drawings using only ballpoint pens and I think it's interesting. And after, after she actually did that course, the very first course with us, I filmed her 
and she was super nervous about it. But after that, she also opened up as an art teacher and she started doing workshops and she leads uh, live drawing sessions and she hangs out with uh, urban sketchers in England and it's amazing. So um, even for the faculty, not just for the students in sketchbook school, but also for the faculty, it can really make a big change to be supported by such a, a big audience and uh, by to be surrounded by so many like-minded people. Absolutely. I, I love that story. And you know, the truth will set you free. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's so important for, um, we talk about on the show a lot, like, to, like all of your um, kind of secret identities, like your artistic uh, identities, like you really should let that out. You really should come out with it because mm-hmm. when you do express it out into the world and you do share your inner secrets <laughs> and your inner creativity with the world or your desires of what you want to do, uh, you'll be surprised with you know, the people that will come to your aid or the people that will try to help you in your, your journey or be interested in following you in your, your own creative journey. You just have to kind of have the bravery. I know it's tough, especially when you're, you have that kind of fear of failure or other resistances, um, but you really have to come out with that. Yeah, I agree. Absolutely. Yeah. Now you talked also about being, you know, people being relieved by some of your instructors uh, coming out about their own resistances and talking about why they do it and stuff like that. Um, so I was wondering, what are some of your resistances, maybe um, things that try to hold you back or, or block you? Oh, um, well, I don't have time. That's the <laughs> biggest one. Uh, when it comes to uh, that creative habit, I, I try to I want to make a drawing every day and I do it almost every day. I, I think I, I really created that habit for myself. And then um, if I, yeah, if I don't have time, then I get a little bit grumpy and then I try to squeeze in five minutes anyways, just before bed or something like that. Uh, but of course there's always, yeah, time is a, is a big one for, you know, not being able to, do anything or to make art or to even pick up a pen what about the the question yeah okay i can start this drawing but what if it doesn't turn out the way it is in my head Mm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) and i i think i sort of can um dodge it by saying you know what i already know it's not going to turn out like it's in my head because in my head it would be perfect and there's no no such thing as a perfect drawing. <laughs> and I right. think even if I look at other people's drawings, I like the drawings that have imperfections way more than drawings that are super perfect. You know, that's why I like looking at my drawings that I make now. I enjoy looking at those more than the drawings that I made so very detailed and realistic, maybe from a photo or something. So that that really helps, you know, to tell myself, like, I'm just creating a little memory here by drawing. And if the lines are wonky or the proportions are off or that person that I try to draw is walking away and it messes up my drawing, I'll deal with it. And um, you know what? There's another page that I can also fill if this one isn't the perfect one. And there's not, never a perfect one. So that, that really helps me with those, um, those stupid thoughts that the inner critic sometimes uh, throws at you. Um, any other struggles? I've had, I have, I have had a creative block a few time, a few years ago, which was really scary because I just didn't feel like drawing at all. And I thought, now I've, now I've done it, you know, just like with photography, I've lost my mojo. I can forget about it. <laughs> I'll just go do something else. The wonderful thing is I shared it with other artists and I shared it with the community in uh, sketchbook school. And I got so, such warm responses and so much help and so many advices and tips. And that really, really helped to just heal, you know. And in a few weeks' time, I was drawing again. Um, so, yeah, I think uh, being surrounded by creative people really helps. And um, trying to trick the inner critic 
with all those, you know, questions like, what, are you going to make art now? Mm -hmm. Oh, so you're an artist? That kind of talk, <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm trying to dodge that. Like, no, I'm not an artist. I'm just making a little quick doodle. I have five minutes, so I will do that right now. <laughs> and it's hard, but um, uh, once you push through and once you do that a few times, it gets easier. Oh, and also uh, something that I also think is really helpful um, is to be curious. So if your inner critic tells you, okay, so you're going to try and draw this very complicated scene, well, good luck with that. Uh, I don't think that's going to work out. Then be curious, like, but what if I do it? What if I just try and put down some lines? I want to see what comes out. So without really thinking about the perfect result, it is helpful to be curious about what you can actually do. And I think that's also a good way to trick your uh, inner critic. No, absolutely. And I wanted to go back to when you were talking about um, kind of losing your creative mojo uh, mm -hmm. when you're doing your photography. Um, and then when my question is, when you started posting your art online, um, did you find a difference uh, between that, like where you weren't finding that satisfaction of seeing your photographs and magazines, um, then compared to um, posting your art online and uh, receiving feedback in that way? Yeah, it was very different. I mean, it, it really came from me and uh, not because anybody told me to make that stupid little drawing of... Uh, a character or whatever I did. Mm -hmm. um, so it was really just me having fun and posting that. That's really how I, how I approached it. And I think that really helped me to overcome any thoughts of what will they think, you mm -hmm. know? Uh, and it also helped to join, um, for example, I often submitted art to Illustration Friday. So they would give a prompt, like a drawing prompt, and then that week you can work on it and you just post it there and then it would be part of the whole stream of art that would be uh, posted up there. And that's actually how I found a lot of online friends. Some of them are now also part of the faculty in Sketchbook School, which is awesome. Oh, cool. Um, so that really helped me. And it really was, I really wanted it to be playful I had been playing with the idea to make it another career, like uh, being an illustrator. And actually, I started doing some uh, illustration jobs uh, around the time that I also did the online courses, started the online courses. But I'm actually pretty happy that that didn't really take off yet when um, we started Sketchbook School. Because now drawing is really still something that I do for me, only for me, and not professionally. So I can do only what I want and I can explore and I can learn as much as I want without it being part of my job. I don't know if that answers your questions because I forgot the question. <laughs> no, it does. Yeah, it is. Like you said before, it's so important to find that. Uh, thing that satisfies you, mm -hmm. uh, that thing that brings you joy, uh, rather than thinking about like the money or thinking about if this is going to sell or, you know, what kind of audience is this going to receive? It's just doing that thing that that's important to you yeah. that you can have fun with and that you can just go with. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. I also wanted to ask you going back to that, that idea of losing your identity for, for anybody out there that, uh, maybe finds themselves kind of in that same place where they're not identifying with what they're doing and it's not bringing them joy, uh, even though it used to bring them joy. Would you have any advice for them to kind of analyze that situation and maybe determine whether it's just kind of a creative block like you had or if it's something that they, you know, that their soul <laughs> is telling them that they need to kind of walk away from or to go to something new like you did with photography? Yeah. Um, I think with photography, I probably could have solved it if I would have made a lot of time for my own projects. So maybe I should have, I could have, I don't think I should have, but I could have find a teacher, for example, who could help me out and get some 
creativity flowing again, get my own ideas out, um, uh, carve out time in my, uh, on my calendar to really work on my own projects uh, without, you know, anyone telling me what to do, just projects that I really um, wanted to, photos that I wanted to make, make some series for my portfolio or whatever, or not even for my portfolio without any purpose behind it, just making the stuff. I think I could have solved the problem that way and I might have uh, been able to uh, get the joy back. But I, I think it wasn't just that. It it might also have been like after 10 years in that realm, I wanted something different. So it's it, it wasn't only the create, creative block or losing my interest for it that made me move out. It really did make me realize like what else what do I really want? So I think if you are in um, a creative job, your work is what you what you make. And then uh, the danger is that you don't make anything except for the, the work. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's really what we want to do in sketchbook school. Again, looping back to that, um, you know, uh, create a safe place for someone who is, who is doing a lot of creative stuff for their work, but they kind of have forgotten about their own sketchbooks that can be really amazing and that give you that meditation or that can give you new ideas or insights or grow your skills that eventually you will also be able to um, use in your work. So I think making sure that you keep learning and that you keep uh, developing your art also in your in your work, I think that is really important that you don't fall into the trap of doing the same thing over and over again because people ask it and they know it from you. They know that kind of work from you and they will ask you to do that again and again. We have another issue. Can you do something with blah, blah, blah? And then it's, again, it's the autumn theme and they want the same thing again. So as long as you keep your mind flexible and your brain uh, creative, I think you can overcome a block like that. A hundred percent. Yeah. I, I actually had a, a month long kind of creative lull <laughs> at the mm. beginning of this year. Um, and the, the cure for it was getting back to my own work and kind of, I, I was already ahead of the podcast for a month. Um, and I just had to get to my own personal stuff and take care of other projects and just kind of clear the slate, uh, so to speak. But it's yeah. so important to get yeah. back to your own stuff and you can find so much motivation when you are actually doing the thing <laughs> as opposed yeah. to um, – not, not that the, the podcast is, is feels like work, but it's still it's a different type of kind of output, you know? Yeah, I think you need to always uh, make sure that it doesn't start feeling like work, that hmm. you find – uh, the joy and uh, that you can also that you also know where the joy is in the work or in that job uh, and then it stays fun absolutely yeah. well how do you protect yourself against finding that with um, like sketchbook school and draw tip Tuesdays uh, and everything else you do like there's I know there's a ton of administrative work that that comes with projects like that um, so how do you find the the balance in your time, like what does your typical day look like um, so that you do, you can still get to your own work and still kind of have that playful uh, mindset with your own stuff. Yeah. Well, Danny and I are actually now after four, more than four years, we are now learning to delegate more. (laughs) Four years. (laughs) It's really hard to end it off. Now. I mean, we have a fantastic team um, of people who are really, really great at uh, taking things out of our hands. So we have st- started doing that already, but uh, still um, it's, it's, it is hard to, to delegate and to um, take your hands off of some things because we don't need to do it all. You know, at some point we did do it all and we almost burnt out, but we were in time to see that and change it. What we usually do uh, on uh, just a, regular daily basis we uh use slack for uh our communication so danny and i always talk i think once a day yeah pretty much Mm -hmm. uh so when he wakes up he'll 
who pick me and say, uh, are you up for a chat? And then we talk through the day, like, what are you doing today? What did you do yesterday? Oh, I talked to that person. And by the way, we need to do such and such. And our team, we are now uh, with six and um, we are all online on Slack behind on at our desks between 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. That's EST. So for me, that's 2 p.m to uh, 5 p.m. So that's a good overlap. And whenever someone needs some something, we can call each other. And um, that way we have a, a limited uh, part of the day that we can just help each other out or ask each other stuff. And then the rest of the day, we can all just work con- concentrated. And Slack will be open, but you might not be very quickly to respond. And how I get that thing going with Draw to Tuesday, well, I think that's just really, I just note down ideas as I get them. And then at some point, I just sit down, I I block a whole day to film Draw Tip Tuesdays and to edit them. And, um, and then I make them. And it's always fun. Sometimes at the beginning of the day, I'm like really procrastinating. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, which, which one of these ideas should I start with? And I don't really know how to, how to tackle it. So then I feel a little bit of resistance. But once I'm, I'm going, I'm really happy because I'm just drawing, you know, just the, the only difference is that there's a camera rolling. Um, and for, for sketchbook school, uh, as long as Danny and I both, uh, know to hand off certain things, we have enough, uh, space for any creativity. And that's really what we try to, uh, to do, you know, be as creative as possible. And uh, the, one of the main goals that we have for sketchbook school is for us to have fun and for the team to have fun. Uh, rather than big revenue goals, we're like, it just has to be fun. And we want to learn things and we want to share the fun. And as long as we keep that in mind, the why, we can't really go wrong. So, yeah, it's a pretty good place to be at. Absolutely, yeah. A good thesis statement is just have fun first. Yeah. Well, speaking of fun, this has been tons of fun. We've been um, talking for is- almost an hour. I know. It's awesome. (laughs) You're the best. Um, The way we like to end is with the final push. And that's Mm -hmm. where I ask you to reach through the microphone and grab the shoulder of one of the listeners that you've already really inspired today and just give them your best final words of advice and really push them to pursue their own creative passions. Oh, boy. Okay, here we go. Well, I think the element of fun is just really important. Um, I also think that um, if you want to be creative, make it a habit. Do something every day. Even you can also include creativity into, you know, cooking. Make a fantastic meal uh, instead of doing an elaborate drawing. I, that's creativity too. Or maybe you just sing, sing under the shower or something like that. But <laughs> I, I really like doing a drawing every day. Sometimes it's five minutes sometimes it's 50 minutes and anything in between and don't let that inner critic come between that because you deserve it to take time for your creativity and if you do it in the beginning of the day you'll have it done and you'll feel so much better about it and other things will actually go better than too instead of when you're still thinking about, hmm, I really should do that drawing. I wonder when I have time today. Uh, maybe later today I can do that drawing. And then in the end, you will run out of time. Hmm. And next day it will be the same. So make it a habit to just carve out a little bit of time to be creative. I hope that is a little bit of a push. <laughs> oh, it's a great push. The whole episode has been a really good push. So I, I, re- I really do appreciate you coming on the show today, uh, sharing your story, telling us about Sketchbook School and uh, really helping us out. Yeah. And if uh, anybody needs an extra push, we have a 10% discount for any, any of our classes. So um, if, yeah, if you go to sketchbookschool.com and pick one of the uh, one of the courses, just uh, fill there the discount code SBS Push, and uh, you're in with 10% off. So I hope to see anyone who loves to make art. <laughs> I'd love to see them in class.
Very cool. And that's thank you for that. And uh, that's sketchbook school with a K on school, S K O O L. But no, de- no worries, because we'll have that linked up at the show notes page today, yourcreativepush.com slash 298. Kosha, thank you so much for coming on the show today and for giving us that push. Thank you for having me. Oh, great stuff from Kosha. My appreciation to her for coming on the show and telling us all about Sketchbook School and her own creative journey. And one really important point that I wanted to drive home, because as I was listening back, it's something that really stuck with me. And it's that idea of being afraid to start doing something, to start a, a creative project or a creative day, because you're afraid that it's not going to turn out the way that you have it in your head. And this is definitely something that um, really plagued me before I started the podcast and something that has crept up in my various creative projects, whether it's writing or making music videos, as I have done the podcast and taken breaks from those creative things and gotten back to you know sitting down and saying, okay, I'm going to create. It's been too long. Uh, and trying to get back into that practice and, and get those muscles moving again and get out of that um, mindset of, you know, the fear of the blank canvas or the, the, the fear of the blank word processor document or, or whatever it may be. It's so tough to, to start because of the fact that you're afraid that you're not going to be able to get that idea that you have in your head down on paper. And you really have to get past that because not only are you not going to get it exactly like you have it in your head, but unless you're a creative uh, genius or a savant, you don't even know what's really going on in your head. You don't have a fully formed idea. So it's impossible to get that down exactly right. So like Kosha encouraged, just start doing it. That's the whole fun part of the creative process is figuring it out along the way. Just know going into it that it's not going to be uh, exactly right. It's going to be a little bit sloppy and it's going to be a little bit different, but that's the whole fun part. That's the whole joy of the creative process is going through that and letting your brain guide you through the unknown, you know? And that's something that definitely gets easier with practice. And especially if you've taken a long hiatus from your creative passion, coming back to it can be daunting. It can be scary, but you just got to bite the bullet and start. And like Kosha said, sometimes it's better if it comes out sloppy or, or has those imperfections. It's even more beautiful and better to look at. Um, but it's also okay to be different. And that's actually where it is fun to be a creative person when, when you're able to, um, in the process, change things up from the way that they were in your head. So that you can sit there and look at a finished product and just be so pleasantly surprised with what came out. So my thanks once again to Kosha. Once again, that discount code was SBS push. And we'll have that linked up again at today's show notes page, yourcreativepush.com slash 298. And we've been having a lot of fun on Facebook and on Discord uh, with our Miracle Morning uh, 30 day challenge. So it's never too late to join. I know a lot of people are planning on starting uh, their own 30 day journey on August 1st. I plan to continue to do it because it has been very eye-opening, very awakening, (laughs) no pun intended, uh, and uh, very helpful for me in my creative life. If you don't know what we're talking about, you can go back and listen to Alatar's episode. That was yourcreativepush.com slash 296. But basically, we're just encouraging each other uh, and checking in with each other as we wake up early to get to our creative passions. A lot of people were confused as to what a Discord server was, Uh, Maybe we made it sound too confusing, but Discord is just like uh, instant messenger or messaging on Skype. It's just a a way for the community to come together and uh, participate in a chat. Um, There's different categories, and one of those categories is our morning motivation, but we have a general chat as well as uh, tons of different places to share your inspiration or your work. Um, You can get the link for that at yourcreativepush.com slash discord, or just hit up me or Alatar in the Facebook group or via email, youngman at yourcreativepush.com if you need help getting on there. But that is all I've got for you today. So hopefully you were inspired to go and get your work done. So go and get it done. I am actually going to take a week off because I am taking a week off in real life. I have a week off from work and I'm going to take a week off from the podcast as well. So we will be back in two weeks 
but I will be recording a very special episode 300 while I'm away, um, which I'm very, very excited about. I can't wait. So we will be back in two weeks if you need the push again, but please join us on Facebook or on Discord because creativity never takes a break and we are all here for you and for each other. So until then, I love you all so much. Go get some amazing work done and we'll see you next time. Bye. Never miss a push. Head to yourcreativepush.com slash subscribe to find the easiest way for you to subscribe to the podcast.